As I said, my name is Allison Stevens, and I will be joined by my colleague, Shaminda Pereira from Volunteer NBC, a volunteer centre serving Mississauga, Brampton and Caligran in, in Ontario. Let me begin by acknowledging with respect that the land on which Volunteer Canada is situated is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabeg people. And the land on which I am privileged to live, work and volunteer is on the traditional unceded territory of the Ganagazwe. It is with a mixture of anguish and hope that I express my gratitude for all I receive from this land. And I am committed to understanding how I can contribute to both truth and reconciliation by addressing our past with an open mind and open heart. Colonialism, oppression, white supremacy, and systemic racism have caused harm to many people in Canada and around the world. May we support and accompany each other in our individual and shared journeys towards society built on justice, respect, equality, and harmony so that we may all thrive and prosper as diverse and connected communities and nations. First, a few words about Volunteer Canada's. For those who may not know us, we provide national leadership and expertise on volunteering in order to enhance the participation, quality, and diversity of volunteer experiences. Why? Not just to get more volunteers or to have a more diverse volunteer pool or to have more um, interesting volunteer experiences, but in order to build strong, connected communities throughout the country. We do not do this work alone, but with and through a network of over 150 volunteer centers, nonprofit organizations, educational institutions, government departments, and of course, volunteers. I'm sorry, my, my computer is not cooperating with me. What we will cover today. So, let me move this out of the way so you can see better. Why volunteer recognition tool focused on skills used and acquired? Then we will move to background information about PREB, which was the predecessor to Experience Plus, and how Experience Plus came to be. Following that, some basic information about the program and how it works. And then I will pass over to my colleague, uh, Shaminda, to talk about some of the Ontario Volunteer Centre Network and Volunteer MBC's experience in their role in managing PREB and Achieve Ontario. After that, we'll have some, a question and answer period and we'll share some um, links with you about, about the, uh, um, the Experience Plus program, but also about some other um, events and information. So, starting up, why a recognition tool of this type? We know, we've heard for years um, and talked about it often, about how volunteering is a great way for young people to learn new skills and polish existing ones, apply what they are learning in school in a real world setting, or for people who have lost their jobs or are wanting to improve their professional profile, to have some real experience to add to their CVs. And of course, for newcomers to show Canadian experience when applying for a job. So we know there is a need to formally recognize what people do and learn while they are volunteering. This can also help re by recognizing the value of volunteers contribution. It can really support the motivation and satisfaction of volunteers in their what they're doing. Knowing that they will receive this type of formal practical recognition can serve as an incentive for recruiting volunteers. Also, this particular um, program offers organizations a way to describe a person's volunteer activities in specific and professional terms by using the Canadian Government's Directory of Occupations, or NOC, 
as a reference. Um, so a certificate of this type can support a volunteer's job search or career transition. However, no single tool is enough for recognizing a volunteer's contributions and impact. Certainly, we can recognize it during Volunteer Week. Now here you see last year's Volunteer Week theme. Um, we're not, I'm not able to provide this kind of image for this year's Volunteer Week, but it is coming up soon and you'll be getting it um, through our website very soon and through our social media. So yes, that's one way that we can recognize volunteers is during Volunteer Week. But there are many other ways, for instance, listening to what they are saying, listening to their concerns and their ideas. Um, this shows volunteers that we actually value them, that uh, we think they know uh, a lot, that they have ideas that could improve the program, or they have concerns about their, what they're doing um, in their tasks. Um, also, volunteers want to know that they've made an, had an impact. And um, so I think that's one of the things we found in the research that we've done about um, volunteers, just talking to volunteers, but also through some formal research, um, that knowing the impact is one of the main things that makes a volunteer feel recognized and um, satisfied in their work. But don't generalize. No, it's not just volunteers are great, we couldn't do, with, uh, we couldn't do without, it, without you. Um, get specific. And finally, what about <laughs> um, just a simple thank you? That can be every day, that can be on a regular basis or a, a, an irregular basis, but um, not an exaggerated thank you, but often. I think that's the point. So just a reminder about volunteer recognition. Now for a little bit of background about um, the, this program. So PREB was launched in 2004 by the Volunteer Centre in Quebec City, the Centre d'Action Bénévole de Québec, or CAB Quebec or CAB Q, we often call it um, as a short form. PREB actually means, it's an acronym for Programme de Reconnaissance des Expériences Bénévoles, which roughly translates as a program, a volunteer recognition program um, focusing on volunteer experience. Its main objective um, was really um, to support those who had been out of the workforce in their search for employment, to gain experience as volunteers, obtain official professional recognition for it. The, act, the original target actually was for people who'd been uh, parents, stay-at-home parents. Um, that of course has extended to many other groups, but that was the original um, program in Quebec City. So it was used in the Quebec City region for several years before expanding province-wide. So after that, um, a collaboration with Volunteer Canada allowed an English version to be promoted across the country, with volunteer centres taking on the role of training staff in nonprofits on how to use the system and create certificates. The volunteer centre I was working with in Montreal at the time was part of the launch. Our training coordinator appeared in one of the videos with her volunteer assistant who had received a PREB certificate. He was almost completely deaf and nonverbal and expressed his delight using printed flashcards. It was really quite touching. There were videos across the country uh, as organizations um, kind of chimed in to say that they were joining this program and using it to recognize their volunteers. Then in 2015, Toronto hosted the Pan American and pa Pan American and Parapan American Games. And the Volunteer Centre Network in Ontario started working with CAB Quebec and Volunteer Canada to create a prov prov provincial version of the program known as PREB Ontario. Over 2,300 certificates were awarded to volunteers involved in the Games and OVCN continued to coordinate the program under a new name, Achieve Ontario. In early 2020, 
Volunteer Canada and Cab Quebec started talking about a relaunch of Preb with a bilingual name, something that had been talked about for years. So why Experience Plus instead of Preb? Well, Volunteer and Cab Quebec started talking, as I said, in, in early 2020 about transforming Preb into a completely online program with a, a bilingual name. Why? Well, one of the reasons was to make it more accessible. Organizations could do the training themselves online and the name would have meaning for organizations working in English. There would be less overhead for administrators of the program. There would be no funding. That was a very big attraction as well. There will be one national system instead of PREB and Achieve Ontario. And the plan was that we would launch in late 2020 or early 2021. That would be phase one. And then phase two would be the outreach to employers, educational institutions, regional municipal governments, etc. Well, as we all know, things come up that derail the best laid plans. Um, so our launch was delayed, as you see, I said 2020, late 2020, early 21. Well, we were all struggling with COVID and uh, the related um, work that uh, the volunteer uh, centers and Volunteer Canada were doing uh, delayed us and some other um, organizational priorities. However, it is happening now, so that's a good thing. Phase two, however, will take a bit longer. Um, in phase two, we want to do the outreach I was talking about. Um, we want to look beyond nonprofits in, in terms of informing them and promoting the program. Um, you know, municipal um, municipal organizations, um, um, companies, uh, anyone who could be an employer in any sector, um, employment centers. You can imagine all the different. Um, uh, you know, stakeholders or partners in this that could be could be helpful. And then we also want to upgrade as time goes on. There will be things that we want to improve in the system. So for all of this, um, we will need some funding. After a couple of disappointments, Volunteer Canada continues to search out opportunities for funding. And one of our ideas is to um, include it in a larger project related to micro-credentials for volunteering. There seems to be um, quite a lot of interest in micro-credentials and so, you know, why not um, try that? However, that's in the future and right now we are here to present you the program that we are launching today. So what is Experience Plus? Basically, it's a volunteer recognition program based on Employment and Social Development Canada's National Occupational Classification referred to very often as NOC. It allows organizations that engage volunteers to recognize the value of volunteer experience in a formal way, to assist volunteers in their search for employment, but also for educational access or career transition. And it uses the standard, standardized and flexible online recognition tool it is a recognition tool that references the special skills and accomplishments related to a position a volunteer has held. So sort of looking at the parallel, a receptionist in a company, a receptionist in a government department, a receptionist in any organization, if it's a volunteer receptionist, what are the, what are the skills that are practiced and um, acquired in a position like that? So how does it work? Through ex the Experience Plus website, <coughs> excuse me, um, website, staff members of organizations wishing to participate can receive training to become a certified Experience Plus agent. Organizations must be nonprofit and preferably a member of Volunteer Center or a Volunteer Canada. If not, they will have to pay a small fee. Trained agents can create Experience Plus certificates attesting to skills and experience acquired during a volunteer's involvement as listed in specific job descriptions in the, in the NOC. 
volunteers can use these certificates to add value to their experience on CVs if they're entering the job market or seeking to change their employment or applying to college or university programs. So here is what the Experience Plus uh, website looks like. You can log on to it today. Um, and basically, there's a brief description of the program, the history, then there's the training pages where you find out about the training and then can fill in um, an application form. And then there's a contact us section. There's of course a way to log on once you have qualified for the training or you know been accepted in the training, you'll have a username, a password, and then you log in. At the bottom of the page, if any of you uh, we're within InPreb before, you may have met Max. Um, this is a, a short uh, um, promotional video um, where Max relates his uh, experience of being a volunteer at a film festival and uh, then he subsequently gets a job using his, um, uh, his Experience Plus um, certificate. Max returns as your nar narrator if you take the training. So, what's involved in the training? It's basically five steps. As I said, you fill out an application form on the Experience Plus website in which you inform you, you inform us of your organization, your your, you know, and and you have to enter you enter in your own login information including your own password that you choose. Um, you um, enter um, the logo uh, of your organization because that's what will be being used um, um, on the certificate. And after a verification that your organization is a nonprofit, that you're a member of a Volunteer Canada or Volunteer Center, um, or the other route that uh, I, I mentioned to you that where you uh, do a small tra uh, financial transaction, you 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 you're you're approved and you follow four short training modules online. And I mean short when I say short. The total um, length of time of the four modules is about 35 minutes. So these training modules really cover the history, the objectives and practicalities of the program. And you have to successfully fill out two quizzes on what you've learned in those modules. Then you have to agree to uphold the program's principles, standards and criteria. And then when you've completed the fourth module, you can start, uh, you're ready to start creating certificates. As you will find out in the training, you don't just automatically uh, give, a, give a certificate. There's sort of a thought process and planning aspect to, to doing that. So just some information or um, if, if, if any of you are already trained as a PREB or a Chief, uh, a Chief Ontario agent, your login information should be the same. Um, you may have to update it if you've changed your email um, and you may have to change it if, if you've kind of changed organizations or anything like that. So there could be um, some uh, processes that we can help you out with. Um, you may have to update some of this information. For instance, if you if it was a few years ago, your organization might have a different logo. So you'll need to um, update that. Um, you don't have to follow the training, but the modules will be there for you if you want to refresh um, your memory, but no quizzes for you. Um, finally, really, you were certified as an agent, not your organization, so you take your certification with you. You remain certified, but you will have to change more than just your login information. Obviously, the name of your organization, not just the logo. And if your current organization does not meet the criteria as a member of a volunteer centre or Volunteer Canada, you may have to pay that fee I was referring to. So as I said, we'll be there to help you if you um, have uh, changed any of these uh, or forgotten or changed uh, the information in your for your login. So here is what an Experience Plus certificate looks like. Basically, you have the title uh, that the person, um, the volunteer position, 
Um, you have the number of hours, which is a useful thing um, for um, if you even if you don't have a volunteer um, a normal system to, to log. This is this is one way in which you can log the hours for your uh, volunteers. And then you have the tasks or activities and the competencies and skills that, that are listed for a receptionist. And when, when as an agent you access the um, classification, you will see many, many, many choices and you choose out of those ones which ones apply to what this particular volunteer do, did or is doing. And um, you note that there's two Volunteer Canada logos here. This is not how it will appear on your, your certificate. This was a test certificate that was created during the development. So your logo will go on the left, and in the middle is a place for a signature instead of that scroll that you see there. So you have a choice of a short, um, a short version of the certificate or a longer one. And in the longer one, what basically there's an added space for you to uh, include achievements a volunteer has uh, or any training they completed, any special comments that you would have or that others have had about the volunteer, um, quotes about the volunteer or maybe even the, maybe, um, the, the volunteer has made. So it makes it a fuller certificate that gives more information to a potential employer or, um, or academic program. Um, but it's not necessary, so you always have that choice. Well, that's about all I wanted to tell you about uh, Experience Plus, and um, I'm sorry if my <laughs> sound is not strong enough. I hope you've been able to get most of it. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Shaminda Pereira. Shaminda has been involved with the non-for-profit sector since 2011. He is Manager of Learning and Resource Development at Volunteer MBC, leading the Volunteer MBC Learning Centre and a co-lead of Volunteer MBC's Technology Integration and Advancements. In relation to the Provincial Achieve Ontario system, he was the Regional Trainer for Peel Region and has until very recently the system was the System Administrator. He is also a user within Volunteer MBC as a Certified Achieve Ontario Agent providing certificates to their internal volunteers. With over 19 years of experience in all aspects of adult learning, he is a learning and development strategist. He will be relating some of his experience both as an administrator and a user of PREB Ontario and Achieve Ontario. Over to you, Shaminda. Thank you, Alison. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to meet all of you virtually. I am going to go off camera so that I say bandwidth and I broadcast my uh, what I have to say clearly. Alison, if you can, yes. Um, Alison mentioned that I am from Volunteer MBC. MBC in our name represents the three geographical areas our volunteer center serves, which, is, which are Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. Uh, we offer a volunteer referral service, a premier volunteer recognition event, and services to support the learning and development of social purpose organizations. In learning and development, we provide professional development opportunities, learning systems development, and affordable e-learning development. Today, I'm here to provide a little insight as to how in Ontario we handled the provincial version of Experience Plus. Uh, I can share the chronological events of how it got came into Ontario, uh, mainly through the um, the Pan Am, Pan, Pan Am Games, and uh, recently it was uh, renamed as Achieve Ontario, where it started off as uh, PREB. Uh, throughout the province, the recognition program was distributed and uh, administered by Ontario Volunteer Centre Network, with the frontline distribution supported by its member volunteer centres, such as Volunteer MBC. Uh, the benefit of the system was a tri-party connection, as you see on the screen over here. Uh, for those of you who may be joining uh, with only audio, uh, we have a triangle in the, on the screen sharing the three parties. We have volunteers to the top, uh, the volunteer centers, and I, we have our logo, uh, Volunteer NBC, to the left-hand side, and the agencies and events onto the right-hand side of the triangle. Uh, volunteers are, uh, are the beneficiaries, agencies and events were the users, 
the volunteer centers who were the administrators of the system in our own geographical service areas. Uh, we provide, as volunteer centers, we provided support in uh, system access, training, and help desk support. Uh, we also advocated for the legitimacy and value of the certificate. Um, now this is going to be handled by, uh, completely taken care of by the national initiative and volunteer centers will no doubt support the promotion of the initiative. When we share the potential of the system with our agencies and events, uh, when I mean events, I'm referring to events such as local festivals, sports events, youth campaigns, and any major gatherings that engage volunteers, where the volunteers are making a significant contribution. Uh, in addition to the day-to-day -day roles at social purpose organizations. So to the uh, organizations and events, we highlighted a few key significant points to the leaders of volunteers regarding the program. The first point we made uh, was award certificates and meaning make a big deal about it so that the volunteers understand the value of the certificate. We guided the organizations to figure out how to award it, who to award it to and what is considered as significant uh, based on their organization or events uh, context. It will be different from one, one organization to the other. Um, for example, at Volunteer MBC, we award the Chief Volunteer Certificate to our uh, board members when they're concluding their terms, the youth volunteers who are taking part in uh, various campaigns and events that we may be running, and uh, also to uh, you know, newcomers who are coming into our organization and taking on a particular role and who's made a significant impact in uh, our organization. Uh, yes, as a volunteer center, we make connections to, uh, you know, between volunteers and volunteer opportunities, but we ourselves, we engage volunteers and we use Achieve Ontario to uh, recognize them during conclusion of their terms. And we generally do this during an event, uh, if not an event, at least for our entire team to come together and uh, you know bring the volunteer forward and recognize them, uh, you know where our team uh, team meets. The second point we made uh, to the organizations is to make it part of the annual volunteer recognition strategy. In other words, declare the existence of the system. Uh, in in our region, we worked with uh, the city of Brampton who took the initiative to embed it into their volunteer engagement strategy across the board. So uh, while they were doing their other volunteer recognition events, maybe through their galas or whatever their you know, volunteer recognition event is, uh, on an ongoing basis across their recreational events, their community centers and other volunteer engaging initiatives, they uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, put the Chief Ontario uh, program into the strategy. Um, the third point is that we also showed how the system can be used to draft the volunteer role descriptions. Now, when you get to the training, you will see that, uh, you know, how you create a certificate and you're selecting uh, um, the skills and the competencies from a list of uh, selection options, which are linked with the national occupational classifications. So, we, we were always true to the purpose of the system. In other words, to have a recognizable, credible, reputed, and legitimate certificate, which will be valuable to the volunteers during their advancements in career and employment. So a certificate that speaks the language of the employers and HR departments. Because that is the way that the system is developed, we are, we, organizations are also able to use the same language to draft uh, you know, position descriptions. It's sort of like having a cheat sheet at hand to work with. And uh, as volunteer centers, we were there to you know, support them all the way. And now with the national initiative, we have Volunteer Canada who's supporting uh, the users, uh, you know, all the way. Uh, so this is how we used the system uh, in, uh, across Ontario, uh, mainly to make sure that uh, like our role and also we were encouraging the organizations as well to sort of put this certificate forward because it becomes a legitimate document that volunteers can take uh, when they are going for maybe employment purposes or they are when it comes to youth for their scholarships uh, you know it, the certificate becomes a document that gives a little bit of add, adds a little bit of more value 
to whatever their you know scholarship application, university application, or their employment application is. Uh, so I hope I was able to convey the value and the potential of the system and the certificate of course. Um, all what I said that we did us as a volunteer center and us as an organization and what we were promoting is applicable to you as well. Uh, there is uh, no major difference in terms of how the system functions. It's just that now we have a national entity who's promoting, advocating and supporting the program. Um, I'll be happy to answer any other questions during the Q&A period. And Alison, if I not touch on any point that you wanted to convey, you can ask questions from me as well. And until such time, with that, I will hand over the session back to you. Thank you, Shaminda. Very interesting. And um, the only thing I think you didn't mention that you had mentioned to me is your experience with your regional or municipal government that how they were supportive of this. And so perhaps you could just talk about that for a moment and that might encourage people, um, whether they're volunteer centers or other agencies, um, you know, to, to be in touch with their municipalities. Certainly. So as I mentioned, uh, the city of Brampton, their volunteer engagement uh, department, uh, the titles of the departments may be different, but the, the department that is handling the volunteer engagement they approached us and they said we like PREB uh, because we've been promoting uh, Chief Ontario, uh, you know, from time from the time that it was PREB and the municipality uh, municipalities picked it up as well. Uh, City of Brampton came forward and said we like to make sure that this is something that's uh, you know embedded into the strategy of our uh, you know public administration's uh, uh, sort of volunteer engagement strategy. And also, uh, you know, they saw the value of uh, having the volunteer hours recorded, having the, uh, you know, like it's being very aligned with the national occupation classifications because it speaks the language of the employers and especially the HR departments. And our region, um, covering Mississauga, Brampton and Caledon is highly multicultural. So we have a lot of uh, immigrants, uh, you know, who are moving in and out of our region. So. Uh, some of them, uh, most of them are new immigrants, and when they are trying to look for that, uh, you know, they come with inter they are internationally qualified professionals, but they want to have that, uh, break that barrier of, you know, the Canadian experience, uh, having worked in a Canadian setting. So this gave, uh, you know, uh, them a document to say that I have skills, I've demonstrated, but also because of, you know, the four boxes in the certificate, one of them is about the achievements and training. I have skills I've contributed, but I also gained new skills or new learning, and it's all there in one document. So it's the volunteer hours, and also sort of like a mini uh, reference letter in there, all together in one. So while we train the uh, you know municipality, uh, the, the parties that who are engaged in volunteer engagement as a function, we trained all of them, and then uh, they after that you know they took it forward and started to. Uh, issue certificates to uh, their volunteers. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't been in touch with them since they've uh, sort of, you know, embedded uh, this strategy and after COVID-19. Um, so I need to follow up with them and find out, you know, how it's been working for them. But also uh, the the summer games the that was, uh, you know, uh, taking place in Mississauga, the games organization body also reached out to us it was created by, uh, you know, the city of Mississauga and said, uh, we like to consider using the Achieve on, uh, Ontario system. So the city of Brampton example was how the administration, administration was, you know, using it uh, in their organization. In city of Mississauga, it was about, uh, you know, how uh, major games that was taking place was, uh, you know, considering using Achieve Ontario. But also the city of Mississauga did use the Chief Ontario and uh, the PREB, uh, you know, on their ongoing roles. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, one of the things I, I want to mention before we go to the Q&A is, um, and it's stressed over and over in the training, I know, that we want to keep the value of this document. Um, yes, it has the, the, the credibility aspect, but it will lose credibility if people are offered certificates who haven't really done, um, you know, something that we consider to be significant and impactful and, and, and valuable. And so it's one of the things somebody comes to volunteer, 
and is there for a few months and then is expecting a, a certificate. That's not really what this the, what this is intended for. So I think it's important. That's one of the important aspects of the training that that's really stressed. Um, really that you know think carefully um, if you have a request or if you are considering giving a certificate it isn't just an automatic thing and it's not you know kind of given out after a couple of weeks of volunteering it's something where it's 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 supposed to be a significant time it doesn't have to be 140 hours or whatever was on that certificate but it has to have some did they really practice that skill for more than a few hours and did they really learn or did they learn that skill so um, that's just one point I wanted to make because, you know, we repeat it over and over again about the fact that it comes, it's based on the, um, the national classification, um, but, but it isn't just because of that, it's because it reflects the real value of what the volunteer did. So just wanted to make that point. Um, so we have thrown a lot of information at you, um, a few anecdotes, but mostly just a lot of practical or, you know, just information. And you may have some questions. So um, we would like to, well, I don't know, I think we'll stay on the questions first before we give you the links. The links at the end will include the, uh, the, the website if you didn't catch it in that slide. So I'm just going to go back to this page and um, just remind everyone that if you're not a member of Volunteer Canada, when you get the, um, the slides, which you will be getting, you can just click on these, but really it's right on our website, um, how to become a member. Um, we also have a blog, uh, Volunteer Vibe, that comes out, um, you know, not in an exact, not a weekly uh, basis or anything. It comes out from time to time, but it's, uh, you can subscribe to it, so you'll catch it every time. And then just about the next uh, webinar, uh, some of you may have attended the um, first webinar that we put on, which was really just about the basics about SDGs uh, or uh, sustainable development goals um, and how volunteer uh, programs and volunteering can be linked to it. So this next webinar next week on Tuesday will be um, really about how to integrate some of these goals into your volunteer program in a very concrete way. It might just be two of them or it might be three, it might be one, but it's, you know, what, what can we do rather than just thinking about it and seeing that there's a link, but actually making the link. So we welcome you to, um, to uh, register for that webinar. So if there's nothing further, no more questions. I'll be happy to answer questions afterwards. Um, and I will hope that you won't get uh, inundated on the wrong email, Shaminda. <laughs> but I want to thank Shaminda very much for uh, agreeing to come on and for, um, you know, helping explain the program and also, you know, what it actually, how it actually works in, internally to a volunteer center or nonprofit and also across the province. And I want to thank Deb for supporting uh, and checking the chat and, and all of that. And I want to thank all of you who took the time today to come out and listen to this and learn about uh, Experience Plus or XP, as we like to say, XP. <laughs> Um, thanks a lot and uh, see you the next time.